That would be fantastic. So welcome everybody. My name is Zach Ullman and I'm a member of Alliance Phoenix. We are a now national, <laughs> national group. We, we got started here in Phoenix, Arizona uh, about five years ago. And, and the idea was, hey, you know, let's, let's get together and do real estate together. And we started in a, a small office in, in Paul Romero. Can we, can we make sure everyone's on mute? Thank you so much. Um, and uh, five years ago, and we got started with about 10 people. We are now up to uh, almost 400 people. And what we do is we have property tours every uh, Saturday to highlight one of our investors and to share what it looks like, uh, what they're doing. And today we have a very uh, special, special uh, couple. Can you guys see my screen? You wanna see my screen? Yes? All right, I'm assuming, assuming you can. So uh, today we're, we're uh, over a property of Rich Hoffecker and Jill Dunnikin. I met, like Solomon, we're gonna put you on mute. Please, please make sure everyone's on mute. I met them a couple, uh, I think almost, almost a year ago, it feels like. And they came in here super excited to invest in real estate. And I can tell you the level of professionalism that these two have is outstanding. You're going to see the, the, the slideshow that they put together for you. And they, they're just really taking, uh, taking hold of, of what they're learning. And it's a lot of fun to see them grow. Uh, Jill and Rich, you guys want to come out? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to stop sharing the screen so we can see your beautiful faces. Uh, yeah. So welcome to the property tour, your first property tour, right? So I remember, yep. I remember when you guys were, um, you know, guests and you came out and you said, Hey, I want to do this and you did it. And you guys are students of, uh, you know, uh, you just came in and, and you did what you needed to do. And this is your first deal, isn't it? It is our first deal. That's yep. fantastic. So I would love uh, for you to introduce yourself to, to the group, to the guests, share a little bit about your background and a little bit about uh, why you got started in real estate and specifically why you joined the group. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, so Rich and I both work um, full time uh, managing engineering teams at large tech companies. Um, and we like our W-2 jobs, but we, you know, it's been talking for a while about how we um, can diversify. You know, we've always been savers. We have stocks, mutual funds, um, and we just wanted to, you know, kind of take a step back and figure out how we can do things better, how we can make our money make money. And so while, while we were having those conversations, I came across um, a copy of Rich Dad, Poor Dad when I was cleaning out a closet and read that book. And that just further the thinking that, you know, there has to be um, another way to, to uh, you know, accumulate wealth. Um, so we, uh, we decided that from that, we decided we're going to buy a rental. So we met with a friend of ours who was a real estate agent. And he looked at us and he said, I can help you buy a rental off of the MLS, but you guys are not thinking big enough. Like, come on, you know, do your homework. And so he started telling us stories about wholesalers and, um, putting properties under contract and not touching them and making tens of thousands of dollars. And we were like mind blown, you know, how, what is this world he speaks of where you can buy houses without mortgages and off, not off the MLS. And um, so we, we left that meeting head spinning. And we, mind blown. <laughs> Love we it. came home, where can we get like quick education? So we turned on YouTube and five hours later, we were like, there is a world here we have to learn about. And so that really spurred us into looking to, you know, where's, what local groups can we find? How can we connect? And um, that, of course, led us to Zach. And I attend the first property tour, and um, we haven't stopped since then. I love it. It just warms my heart to see that, right? We have, we've had so many success stories. And, and I love the people that come in and uh, actually, actually get busy, right, and create a result. And you two, I, I feel you two are just getting started in a, in a big way. Um, so... Let's talk. Of, do you have anything, Rich? I didn't want to. Uh, no, I think Joel covered it quite well. You know, I think uh, the the add on would be, you know, when we did join the group uh, and, you know, just the sense of community really made it a lot easier to make those next steps. Um, you know, we had a lot of awesome people to uh, rely on. 
throughout that process. And, um, you know, it's been a wonderful experience. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's why, you know, when we started the office, we're like, we just want to hang out with people. That's why we started, we just want to hang out with like-minded individuals and then it's really blossom into something. And we have so much amazing talent on here. Um, let's talk about this deal. Now I'm going to start sharing the screen again. And again, as you come on here, we're on, we're almost at a hundred people. I love it. We're going to, um, make sure we're all on mute. Make sure we're all on mute. And I'm gonna. It's it's like the the little button I'm hitting the hitting mute everywhere. Uh, so we're gonna start uh, sharing the screen. And um, for the, for everyone on the call, what we're gonna do is we're we're gonna go through how they found it, how they funded it, how they rehabbed it. And the intention is 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 that you guys get an understanding of what how they did this deal and different ways to do the deal or do deals. Because when I first started, like Jill and Rich said, I thought you needed a traditional realtor, I thought you needed a traditional bank, I thought you needed in, uh, money. Well, let me rephrase that. My own money, my own credit, all of that. But as I soon found out, you don't, right? And then at the end, I'm gonna do uh, a short little training on how to, uh, this is what I call a training. We don't find deals, we make deals, right? So I'm gonna go over a bunch of cool little concepts that we're using to, to do deals all over the country. So do you two, Jill and Rich, you want to talk about, here's the, here's the property overview. You just want to share a little bit of uh, how you found it? All right. Yeah, right. you did. We're so, uh, yeah, I've got a little static there, but um, yeah. yeah. So uh, basically, how did we find the deal? Um, you know, once we got into the group, uh, we identifying, you know, what do we want to do? What, what's our, what's our investing MO, so to speak? Um, and so we looked at a couple different options. We end up deciding on uh, notes and uh, the buy and hold strategy as kind of our educational points. And uh, really kind of got us rapidly ramped up to the point where it's all about the numbers. And, uh, you know, learning some of those techniques and uh, how to break down a deal and really kind of understand uh, what you're gonna get out of it, what your exit strategies are, are and so forth. Um, so ultimately, uh, when we moved into the uh, to uh, Paul's fix and flip group, um, you know, it was, it was great. He walked us through really honing that down to the point where you know we had our target zip codes. We knew exactly what uh, type of single family home we wanted. You know, as a, a three two, uh, we knew our price range, we knew our zip codes, and so forth. Um, and that really helped us kind of focus and narrow. So you're not just shotgun splatter all over the valley trying to uh, find your deals. So anyway, um, this deal came along. It was right on the edge of our, um, uh, of our range in terms of our, our geographic range we are looking for. And uh, it came about uh, Paul and his group had a, uh, um, it was a wholesale deal. And, um, you know, it actually, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because, you know, we've had the experience of, of kind of going through the, the uh, process of, of the rehab and met some of the neighbors and so forth. And uh, I, I'll be darned if uh, we haven't had, you know, four or five times various neighbors come up to us and go, oh my God, I cannot believe you guys. I'm so happy you guys bought this house because this thing was just a sore on the neighborhood. And uh, so, so there was some real exciting, pe excited people about us getting into this, um, which, which made me to question, uh, what the heck was the story behind it? So if uh, Paul, or maybe Delana was a part of, part of that uh, first door knocking and so forth, what was going on with those people? Do we have, we have Paul? So, so for, for, to share with the, the people on the call, this, is the, this property was found by somebody in our office uh, Paul and Delena from Saha, and then they wholesaled it to Jill and Rich, right? So I know I was, uh, Delena, Paul, you guys want to come out and share the story behind how you found it? Yeah. I think it's funny if Paul talks first. <laughs> Paul, Paul is from Tahoe. <laughs> He's from Tahoe. <laughs> yep, I'm at my house in Tahoe because I can zoom in and uh, be with all you guys right there at uh, Jill's house in Phoenix, Jill and uh, Rich's house in Phoenix. It's pretty cool. I love it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, this uh, this property actually, you know, we, um, my partner and I, we built a, a wholesaling company. We started in about 2012. And um, uh, so we, we, uh, 
we started out the hard way, learning everything by ourselves and all of that. Uh, we were fortunate enough to run across some people that uh, helped us learn how to do things better in a better way. Uh, and uh, we finally became uh, pretty successful at all this when we finally uh, actually ran into this group and uh, joined this community. And at the time, we were, uh, we were building our business. Uh, we were building a, a team. And so uh, we've, uh, we've, we've built our business up. It's, uh, it's shrank, it's built, it's shrank. <laughs> it's expanded and contracted a couple of times. It's uh, back in building mode right now. But, um, you know, we've had, uh, we've had people on our team that, uh, you know, participate in Good. the uh, sort of profit sharing of our, of our deals, which is, uh, which is cool. We get to share right all do know was a foreclosure and delena i actually cheated and went through the notes of the deal last night so i know what went out <laughs> actually what happened here but uh i'll let you go ahead and uh share the nuances of uh you know what we had to go through to actually land this deal full disclosure this was probably the easiest one i've done <laughs> I was because I pulled up the notes too, Paul, because we go through so many properties that it's like, oh, what was this one? But just like Jill and Rich said, this was a super eyesore on the neighborhood. So as soon as we pulled up the first day to, oh, I'm getting distracted by chat. As soon as we pulled up the first day, we immediately identified as it, it as a potential vacant. So then we started looking for, when we find a vacant property, we look for phone numbers and we look for relatives in the area. So then two days, it was like two or three days after we identified this property as vacant, we ended up at the owner's dad's house. And then the dad's like, his house is not in foreclosure because the son wasn't even living in the house. He was living someplace else. Owner is, um, the dad's like, his house isn't in foreclosure. And then... <laughs> We get a call from a very defeated son later that evening that says, my house is in foreclosure and my dad told me to call you guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, perfect. That's what I love to hear. So not, you know what I mean. But um, so then with a few days of that initial phone call, we had an appointment and got that property under contract. And then within about 30 days, I think was the time it took because we can do closings faster, but we'd like to just give ourselves 30 days, just make sure everything's lined up for closing. But within 30 days, it was wholesaled over to Jill and Rich. So very, very straightforward deal. That's awesome. So yeah, the, um, uh, so when we, you know, first looked at the deal, actually we were at an all day event. Uh, what was that? Uh, foreclosures yeah, event, workshop. uh, workshop, uh, and, uh, and saw that come across, uh, Paul emailed it out and uh, we were leaving the, the foreclosure workshop and said, let's go check it out. And I think, uh, uh, you know, contacted uh, Paul said, hey, we're, we're very interested. We're gonna run the numbers. Uh, we're very numbers oriented people. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it's all about making sure that that works out. So we came home, uh, crunched and crunched and crunched, comped and looked at, did uh, estimates on what, uh, you know, possible kind of uh, uh, rehab expenses, what that would look like and so forth. And uh, we both came to the conclusion uh, that, you know, this is definitely a deal where there's something in it for us. And, um, you know, we'd like to, to uh, uh, work it as a burst strategy to, or buy and hold to put into the portfolio. So that that's kind of uh, how we jumped on it with uh yeah and i think we we uh spent time uh going through probate cases on county websites um you know look at foreclosure lists ourselves and being that we both full time the kids are in activities you know we were finding the marketing piece to be hard for us to take on on top of uh, you know doing all the education and so working with the wholesaler um, you know, specifically with Delane and Paul's group, it was, you know, really an advantage for us to fast track um, getting to the property um, and, and you know, the, just the help that Paul's given us in terms of connections to the contractors, um, you know, great advice on contracts has been, uh, you know, really propelled us forward um, to the point where we were able to close on this property on Wednesday afternoon at 8 a.m. on Thursday morning. We had people there starting the remodel. So I love it. Uh, we could not have done that without 
uh, without uh, the team behind us. Absolutely. Paul probably got tired of us coming in with questions every week. <laughs> We'd have a list of notes on, uh, Paul, so we have this. I know it has nothing to do with the curriculum this week, but. Uh, <laughs> I love it. That was me when I first started. I was like, what do I do now? What do I do now? What do I do now? <laughs> it was I want to highlight on a couple things, and then we're going to jump into the numbers and talk about how you uh, financed it. So I, uh, you said a couple key things was you, you found your strategy. And I think uh, when I see a lot of people get started is they're all over the place. I know I was, right? We're like, oh my gosh, did you know you could do this? Oh my gosh, did you know, look at this? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And it's like, boof, right? And then you don't do anything, right? That was, that was my experience. So I, you know, I love that you guys got focused. And the other thing I love is you picked a handful of zip codes. And that's what we tell everyone on our morning call is pick a handful of zip codes, be an expert in those zip codes. So when something comes, you can say yes or no quickly, just like you two did. So I love it. Well, um, we can call credit for that. That's all Paul. That's Paul. <laughs> Paul an assignment and I do what I do. I, took, I made a deck. I right. have a deck on every zip code, everything about the zip code. So it, when, when this deal came up, we're like, oh yeah, that is right in our zone. We knew, but, but only because Paul made us. He gave me an assignment. Right. I love it. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's like, you know, you just, you, you take it step by step by step by step. And the next thing you know, you have a deal. And so let's talk about uh, financing. I know one of the, one of the big things when I first got started and many other people is they say, I want to do real estate, but I don't have the money. And at the end of this training, I'm, at, I'm actually going to share like 20 different ways to finance a deal. And uh, so I'll share that at the end. I want to specifically talk about how you finance this deal and share a little bit about that and uh, define maybe what a HELOC is. We had some questions in the chat around that. Yeah, you bet. So um, a, uh, a HELOC is a home equity line of credit. Uh, so when we first jumped into the group, we took Velocity Banking and, uh, you know, the, uh, we, we are both, you know, kind of grew up, credit's bad, don't overextend yourself and so forth. Um, and then, you know, in, through Velocity Banking and then the credit uh, uh, education, we're like, wow, okay, we've been doing things completely wrong. Um, I luckily had have another rental that I've had, uh, used to be a private residence, but uh, um, you know, I've since converted it into a rental, had a ton of equity on it. So I was able to take out a home equity line of credit and have that sitting there. So I had that ready, capital ready to deploy whenever needed, whenever a deal came by. Um, so we got the, the property uh, from Paul for 159. Uh, the HELOC, we had uh, $64,000 on that, um, $40,000 of personal funds, uh, just, you know, uh, money that we had uh, been building in terms of uh, being able to get ready for an investment opportunity. Um, and then we ended up taking out a $55,000 hard money loan. Um, great, great firm, 10%, uh, $700 setup fee. Uh, and, uh, you know, that they made the process so easy. Um, it was great. Um, and then from the remodeling perspective, we knew that we were going to have to, we initially estimated between twenty dollars and $25,000 for the remodel when we went through. And we can talk through some of those details. A little bit later. But um, so for the remodel, we used, again, some of our personal funds. Uh, and then also on the, the uh, uh, Velocity Banking, we had credit cards with 0% interest and tons of credit on it. So we would be able to use that to uh, finance portions of the remodel. And then ultimately the whole strategy is that, you know, buy it, rehab it, uh, uh, get it rented, and then refinance it, pull our money back out, and then repeat that process again, the whole Burr strategy uh, that you've probably heard about. Um, so anyway, uh, in terms of purchase price, 159, the remodel was uh, turned out to be 26,000. We went slightly over for some funny reasons. Um, and then also for uh, utilities closing uh, interest payments, another 6,000. So at the end, we'll have, uh, we have 191,000, uh, 162 to be exact dollars mm -hmm. into the project. Um, and then, so we actually got, uh, a pleasant surprise when we went to uh, have the house um, appraised for the rem uh, for the refi. Um, you know, we were kind of nervous, so we were identifying based on the on the appraised value. That's going to identify how much we can pull back out. 
Um, our objective is to get it, have as little of our money in this as possible so that we could then go on to the next deal. So our comps had taken it to about 225. Um, and so we were really looking at that ARV of 225. Um, however, we got great news. Uh, Friday afternoon, we uh, heard that our comp came back at 250. So what does that ultimately mean? Um, it basically means that we're able to pay off uh, all but $3,662 of our, uh, that we'll have left in the deal um, and uh, basically have a property for very, very little money. Um, and it has, you know, and with a equity of about $62,000. So do you wanna talk about the cash flow side of things? Um, sure, are there any questions there, I guess? Uh, Zach, uh, are you? Okay. Yeah, well, I wanna highlight, man, you guys are so, you guys are professionals at this. Uh, someone <laughs> someone uh, asked, uh, can you explain hard money in the sense of someone asked where you got it? And then the other question was, uh, uh, the question I have is define hard money. Was, did they check your income? Did they check your credit? Stuff like that. I know that's always a big question. Sure. And how, how do you choose your zip codes? How did you choose your zip codes? And then I got Paul. Paul will be up next. Okay. So how we, I'll do zip codes first and then the hard money. So zip codes, we chose um, an area of town that, had price points that we liked that was close enough to us. Because as I say, we, we both work full time and then we have kids activities and things on top of that. So we didn't want to be driving, you know, two hours. So we really kind of said, where, lo where logistically could we manage a rental or a, a rehab um, and in an area where the houses are uh, in a price range that we're comfortable with? Because we're not comfortable buying in our own zip code. Um, so we went, you know, a little bit outside of that in an area that we know somewhat well. So that was kind of for us, you know, we need, we needed something we could manage in our time frame. Um, and then for the hard money loan. Um, so we, I think our ultimate goal is to, is to work with private investors, but on our first deal, you know, we didn't have any, uh, we didn't have any credit built up in the bank yet to prove that we could do this. Um, so hard money was a great uh, stepping stone here too. So hard money is not a bank and it's not a person, you know, um, or a person who trusts you, it's, uh, it's an institution um, or a business that's lending money. Um, but they, uh, we worked with two, um, one that was recommended to us, another is a person that we met just networking at um, real estate education events. Um, and they essentially based the loan on the house value. So if you can show you're buying the house at this price point and the comps prove that it's likely worth this after repair value, um, they say, yep, that makes sense. It's a good deal. We'll loan you X amount of money for six months at this interest rate. And there's you know, maybe a setup fee or a point. Um, so between the two companies that we were talking to, uh, we got different offers from both of them. You know, I then went back to both of them and said, hey, here's what the other company is offering. It's not as good as yours. They both made adjustments in their offer. So it seems like there's some flexibility in working with them. Um, and then it eventually came down to, we only needed, I guess, air quotes, $55,000. One company ended up saying they wouldn't loan that little amount and the other company did, and this was their terms. Um, so this is, we ended up going with them. Super easy process. Um, yeah, it's one of those things that seemed kind of scary, but scary. going through it yeah. took away all the fear. <laughs> and there were things we didn't know and we found it best just to say, you know, they would ask us about some terms and things and we just said, we have no idea. This is the first time we're doing it. Could you tell us what to do? And they're like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so they were so super company. helpful, yeah. Um, and then one thing on the hard money, uh, when you sit down and go through your closing and you're reading through the contract, it sounds like you're signing away your firstborn child. <laughs> Uh, and, and they're probably not going to come back now. Most yeah. of us can go, Hey, that's awesome. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, sorry, uh, full disclosure. I have a 19 year old in college, so she's, uh, yeah, it, 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 I'm, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> so anyway, it, it's very, very scary process. Uh, uh, when you read through that contract, it looks, you know, uh, uh looks like very intimidating, but it's not. Um, you know, they basically just want to make sure you're honest and you're going to do what uh, you think you're going to do and you're going to pay, uh, pay, pay back what uh, you borrowed. I love it. And then someone asked what the interest on the HELOC was? Uh, that's adjustable. And actually, that was a, that was a good uh, thing. Um, initially, it started out, so when I first got it, uh, well before this deal, is towards the, uh, well. End of last year. Yeah, end of last year. 
Um, I end up getting it locked in, not locked in, but a, a starting point of like 4.5 or something along those lines. Um, but more recently with the lower green of the interest rate, it's adjusted down. So right now I think it's at 2.8. Oh, wow. Someone also asked, what's the rate on the refi, the cash out refi? Uh, we are actually, so the numbers on this side are as estimates. We're still in the process of closing on that mortgage. Um, so don't have the final number yet. We should any day. We're, we're still working through that, uh, the converting that and closing the mortgage. We have the appraisal and uh, working with our broker, but yeah, so not hundred yeah. percent sure what it's going to come at, out at yet. And from what we've heard, uh, so we're working with a uh, mortgage lender, um, good guy, uh, knows his stuff. Uh, the initial uh, discussions were going to be in the uh, 4.5, 4.25 range uh, because it's an investor loan. It's not a primary residence. Um, and then, uh, but given all of the, the uh, current economic situation, uh, it's expected to actually be below that. So we're expecting in the mid threes, maybe mid to high threes. I love it. And th this is what everyone needs to know on this call is like, this is, this deal is right, right now in the middle of everything going on in the world. And I mean, you got above ask or a uh, higher than expected appraisal. You instantly got a tenant, right? If correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, right? Yep. Uh, yep. Pretty much in. A tenant. So you know, and I know every, uh, every weekend we do a property tour and, and, and business is still good if you, if, you, if you buy it correctly. We always say, you, you know, you make money uh, when you buy, you get paid on the exit, right? So we always want to make sure that we're, we're um, lining everything up appropriately. I, wanna, I have some things I want to comment on this, but I want to bring Paul in. He's raising his hand over there. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to uh, actually address the appraised value and uh, that they got there because I think there's a very special point in there that is valuable. Uh, when we first appraised this property uh, for our sale, we were right there with Jill and, uh, and Rich at 225. We were thinking probably 230. And that's what we based our sale price off of 159, which was about 69% uh, of the ARV at that time that we appraised it for or that we, that we valued it at. And when I looked at it last night, um, I did a quick little, uh, a quick little comp. I didn't go deep into it, but uh, from what I saw there, I was looking at the fact that, oh yeah, that thing's probably 240 all day long now, which, you know, now that brings it down to uh, like 66% of the ARV that they, that they bought the property at. And then, uh, like I said, I'd like the, I'd like Jill and uh, Rich to uh, speak to how they got that 250, which now brings it down to 63% of the ARV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, so we're going to go through everything. We, we're going to, they have a whole list of remodels. We're going to go through that. We're, we got the comps. I mean, these two are professionals. They put it all together. Uh, but here's something I also want to talk about on the, uh, the cash flow is all your, they, they have $3,662 in this. And this is just a cash on cash return. Uh, we also, there's three other quadrants we have to look at. We have to look at appreciation. Right, that's a return, the, the expectation that the property value goes up. We have to look at depreciation, right? The tax advantages of owning properties. And I know you two are a higher level corporate uh, in the corporate world, right? So that's a great advantage. And then we have to look at amortization. And what I mean by that is essentially your tenant is paying your mortgage for you. And when you add there, so there's four quadrants that we look at. And normally I do a training on that at the end. I'm gonna, uh, we'll do it some other time. But you can add all those up and and get like 100% return on your money. And you can see here, the annual income here is already more than the uh, actual cash they have into it. And we haven't incorporated those other three quadrants. So this is, this is a beauty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, the rental, uh, you know, when, when we were first looking at this, you know, we were thinking of rents probably in like the one uh, 1350, maybe 14. Um, and, uh, you know, so as it got towards that point where, you know, we're about ready to rent it out, um, you know, got closer to actually listing it. Uh, we did some additional analysis and figured, well, let's, let's try and push it to about 1495 and uh, you just see what we get, you know, throw it out there. Um, and so Joe posted it out there and that was the day that our appraisal came back and they had a rental appraisal of like 1595 yeah. or something. So we split it in half, went 1545 and it rented within three weeks. Got it. During Got the it. middle of a pandemic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. 
Well, let's get in. Basically. Oh, yeah. Go, go ahead. ahead Do you have something else? I was going to get into photos and let's talk rehab. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, so in terms of the, uh, you know, mortgage vacant, we capital uh, identified for our costs, you know, we have mortgage vacancy, uh, a percentage for capital expense and maintenance. Um, so out every, you know, monthly, our monthly uh, uh, to cover all of that would be 11 uh, 25. So yeah, with a cash flow of $420 a month. I love it. I love it. Those are, those are beautiful numbers. And again, that's just the cash flow, not all the other advantages you're going to get from, from rental properties. So let's, uh, Chad, real quick, Chad had a question. What kind of mortgage was this? Did you have to declare that you were doing remodeling at the time of the mortgage? Uh, yes. Yeah. So we could, there, we could not have the appraiser come out until the remodel was done, completed. Um, we are taking the mortgage out in our personal names. So we are based on our personal credit. Um, we are closing and then they'll convert it into our LLC. So the, the, the mortgage is based on our credit. Um, we are fortunate that we did not have to wait for six months of rental seasoning um, in order to close. But, uh, but yeah, the bank, the bank then cares when they're doing the mortgage about your own situation. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And most, and, and this is for everyone, most long-term low interest financing is based on personal uh, personal income, personal credit, unless you get seller financing. There's a lot of creative ways. I'm going to go over that at the end. I know uh, straight 30 year term, right? Jill and Rich on that. Yeah. 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 And then uh, Julio does the 1125 include the payback of the hard money. I would, I would assume that the refinance oh, that'll be paid. Yeah. So that'll be closed out with the mortgage. Once we close yeah. on the mortgage, we'll, cl we'll close out the HELOC. We'll pay off the hard money loan. Um, we'll pay off, uh, you know, the money we still have on the 0% credit cards and we will replenish our, uh, savings account so that we can go do this again. Yeah. And, uh, so what they're doing is they're taking high interest, low, uh, short-term money and exchanging it for long-term low interest. And, you know, Jay, Jay made a comment here says there are loans out there, uh, again, that are based, like they just got a big portfolio loan that aren't based on credit and aren't based on income. They're based on the income of the property, the asset. But there's there's a whole world of financing. Uh, I, but I want to get into the, the photos of rehab. So let's talk about rehab. This is this is a beauty. <laughs> you can it say was that. Disgusting. <laughs> you know, for us, we walked in and uh, we looked at some other properties before, and um, you know, they needed complete tools redone in the back, walls moved. Um, so this one was the right amount of mess for us. It was just really dirty, but it had, you know, there was nothing structurally wrong with it other than the roof was about to cave in. <laughs> but it was just really dirty, really disgusting. Um, and so we felt like we can do this. You know, we can put lipstick on the pig and, uh, and, and spit shine this house in and get it into a livable condition. I love it. And that's, I, you know, I, <laughs> I think that's great, you know, understanding because everyone has a different um, skill set, and you know, taking on huge projects with your first deal can be can be uh, challenging. I'll put it that way. If you're tearing out walls and adding additions, if you don't have that skill set, this looks like a great little, like you said, a great little uh, fixer upper. So let's talk about what you did. Whoop. Let's talk about what you did. This is um, it looks all pretty much cosmetic, right? Yep. By and large, yep. And to be clear, it was the awesome craftsman that uh, actually did the work. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we were very fortunate enough to uh, get connected with some really quality people. Um, uh, uh, Mike and his brother Julio, I think uh, Julio is a member of the community. Uh, they, they did an awesome job for us, uh, took care of so many things that uh, really, really uh, uh, made this made this project go so much smoother. Um, so it was my hats off to those guys. Yeah, we did. We hired him to, to do the floor tear out and install. And then we said, and can you do this and this and this and this? <laughs> and so it was and he, great. And he, yeah, he did them all. So we couldn't have done it without. His yeah, help. absolutely. Um, the roof was just a, a, just a disaster. There was like, literally there was plywood showing through the, 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 uh, the, um, shingles. So, uh, complete roof, roof repair, uh, remodel or re replacement. Yeah. Through, uh, soup to nuts on that. Um, so we had a prior relationship with a uh, uh, awesome painter that I've used for multiple other locations. Um, and um, 
you know, personal houses and my other rental. And uh, he did a great job. So we had that lined up, the roof. Um, ultimately, we had uh, found out that the AC needed to be replaced. So uh, that was a, uh, a bit of a, a surprise. So luckily, we were able to save in other areas. It, uh, really, Joe, I think it kind of became a, a balancing point like yeah. throughout the whole project. You know, we'd have those good days where like, hey, we just saved $2,000. And then those days were like, oh, damn it, $5,000 <laughs> gone, you know? <laughs> It was. Yeah, like I'm, we, I'm we ended up buying, Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. I was going to say, we ended up buying all of the appliances um, through B&B &B yes. Appliances, which is a resale, like uh, Scratch and Dent. Um, but that saved us $1,000 on, you know, refurnishing the entire kitchen with new appliances. So for that, we were like, yay. And then the next day we found out we had to put in a $3,000 AC. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking at your numbers and this is, I mean, you guys are great. And this is where I see... A lot of people, th this is it, having a great, A, you got to buy it right, but B, the contractors and, and the cost, uh, you know, on the fix and flip is so important. And what you guys did for $26,000 is phenomenal. And, and I think, and this is why we have these property tours is because we want, you know, for the people that are, are looking to get into this or even myself, you know, that, that have been in this for a long time, it's, it's, a, it's a, a point, a data point saying, okay, what is a reasonable number? to re rehab a house? What is a reasonable number to replace a roof? What is it, right? Because I've had roofing estimates for ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 from one person and then, you know, four or $5,000 on the other. And it's like, well, which do you choose? So this is, this is fantastic. And um, yeah. And then another thing I want to talk about is you guys use what you call scratch and dent, right? And it looks like we're going to get into some of the photos here. It looks like, did you guys paint the cabinets? We did. We did that ourselves. <laughs> and Rich actually put the can lighting in. So we, we took on more projects than we wanted to, but uh, again, it, it saved us. It took our time, but it saved our money um, to paint the cabinets ourselves and um, do some other handyman projects around the house. This is my handyman. Yep. <laughs> I, you know, I was actually fortunate. I had a couple of days on my day job, uh, uh, vacation days to burn. Uh, it was a use it or lose it situation. So I was sitting out there at the house, painting uh, cabinets, getting, uh, you know, colored hands. I was, uh, looked like a Smurf running around for a while. <laughs> Um, but no, it was great. Uh, so some of those type of projects we were able to take on, um, uh, the, you can see the can lighting, uh, they removed the, uh, what fluorescent. Are fluorescent, I don't know. What, what were they thinking in the eighties? <laughs> um, so, uh, I don't think we included a picture of it, unfortunately, right. but, but it had, you know, those fluorescent lights. Uh, so, uh, pulled that box down and, and, uh, framed that or not framed it out, but, uh, uh mudded that out and, uh, did some knockdown, put some, uh, can lights in there. So it really bright, uh, made the place bright. Yeah. Cleaning, I think goes so far, right? If you just clean a place. It's like yeah. This. And then here, here's something that's very crucial for everyone on this call is not over rehabbing, right? Cause I looked at the comps. We're going to pull up the comps here in a minute uh, because it would have been a total waste of money to spend uh, on new cabinets and, and things. So you guys did a great job there and you got it up to the level of the comps. Now, what I see a lot of times people do is they'll either over rehab, spend way too much money because they, you know, they want it their way or they'll under rehab it and try to take a shortcut and, you know, not, not have that uh, up to the quality of the comps. Now, depending on where you're investing is, you know, depending on that, that, and we're going to pull up some comps. Uh, we have some, oh, some. One comment here too. Uh, yes. Over the master bath that's showing here. Um, we had to pull that bathtub out and the surround. And so that was, we were trying to decide there, do we tile it in? It's going to look better. And we ended up pulling up, you know, looking at other homes in the neighborhood, just on the MLS. And we could, from every house we looked at, the bathtubs just had the vinyl surround. So that made it easy for us to say, okay, we, tiling it is going to be over the top. We don't need mm -hmm. to spend the money on $3,000 for tile. Instead, we can spend $300 on a vinyl back. Um, but we did use you know, did research on the market to determine what we should do um, on these areas. I love it. Yeah. So I, we have some questions. Uh, and, and did you create the projected repair cost list or did you find the list and edit it? Uh, we, I just built that list as we were spending money. Like to start out, we didn't know we used a little, uh, we were trying to use a, like a task management tool. And, um, you know, we had our list of what we thought we were going to spend money on. 
and uh -huh. then it just grew. Well, and to uh, add a point of clarification there, pr going in, we had, uh, you know, our rehab list. Uh, so everything, uh, when we went, went through the property initially, uh, you know, I, I did a full inspection. Uh, well, full. <laughs> There's some funny surprises, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you know, as best I, I knew how to go through and identify all the things that we wanted to do. And then we priced those out. We had a, a spreadsheet that covered all of the expenses that we saw us doing, um, uh, you know, all the, all the rehab uh, projects and so forth. Um, it padded that a little bit and that became our starting point budget. Now that's where the flexibility comes in because that budget changed over time as we had surprises of some, th some things that came up and we had, or you know, we were able to get by uh, for a little cheaper right. in some areas and so forth. Um, but ultimately, uh, we, we ended up getting, going about a thousand over. Our, right. Yeah. And that we, the one thing we learned is, uh, there was a front, front bedroom and the blind was <laughs> down and there was a screen on the outside and the sun comes through that front or you can see the front window right there in the front of the house, uh, right there, the screen's on it. So it kind of blocked it and the sun comes in. So it was a warm room. So we, this, the blind was down. Literally, we thought we were done with the remodel, lifted that blind up and the window was cracked. Ooh. So we had a surprise $1,600 and to replace the front windows that took three weeks to manufacture so that we couldn't have the appraiser out. Um, <laughs> so we've learned lift all the blinds. Lift, look, look at all the windows. Uh. <laughs> and, and I think that's such a testament of why we don't do skinny deals is because something's always going to come up. Always, always, always. So plan it. Um, we have some more questions. Here's a question, and I'll, and I'll sort of answer this just for the sake of time. Uh, is monthly return of four, 545 cash flow too little monthly return on an investment of 150? And I'm trying to learn what should be considered a good cash flowing property. So Julio and F F Fahar, I hope I'm saying that, is here's my, my response to that is it depends. They have three, you have to understand here, they have th almost a little less than $4,000 of their own money in here, right? So you have to look at, there's different types of risk. Uh, this is an, I, I would consider this in a nice area, uh, all things considered. So there's that risk, right? Now, if you're in a, an area where uh, it's a little bit rougher, and what I mean by that is, you know, there's the, the economic profile of the area is, is, is rougher. You know, the cash flow may look good and it, it, it won't be reliable or realizable. I see this happen all the time. I started investing in Chicago and you have all these houses in the south side of Chicago that had huge rents with low property values, but you couldn't collect the rents, right? It, it wasn't going to be realizable, a realizable, I don't know a better word for that. So, and then there's all these other quadrants we have to look at, not just cash on cash. We have to look at depreciation. We have to look at amortization, all those, because there's people out there that make a lot of money in, in their W-2 jobs because they love it. And they're, they're willing to buy real estate for the tax advantages of it. So uh, I would say Julio and Fahar, it really depends on your personal circumstances and what you're looking to accomplish. And I'd love to, you know, we can have a, a further conversation, but I just want to get through here. Um, Andy or uh, Cherie says, she, she goes, that looks like a great roof price. <laughs> and they- It was. <laughs> Was that the whole roof or under laminate? Yeah. And we got, we did get several roof quotes, I think four or five. Yes. And um, uh, Esteban, who Paul recommended, ended up doing the roof. We since had him redo our personal residence yeah. as well because he gave us such a great job. Um, so our house is tile, that, this house is a shingle. So yeah, but his price was phenomenal and he did a great job. And he's just a great human being, really. He's a good so, guy. Yeah, he's well known in the community. <laughs> <laughs> he was he's just here this morning. He actually, just I, left right before the video yeah, started. Yeah, <laughs> actually, he was here this morning. <laughs> I love, yeah, everyone, everyone wants your roof guy now. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> let's talk about comps. Let's talk about comps. And I'm going to bring up something real quick here um, because this is so important to comp when we're comping is – now I use Redfin, there's a lot of different ways to do this, uh, but it, it, what we see, we see a lot of wholesalers that will, uh, they, they find comps that in my opinion, they're not accurate because they'll, they'll either be out of the area 
uh, and then their rehabs are uh, way low. So you got high ARVs, low rehabs, and it looks like a smoking deal. So you really got to do your own due diligence. And when you're comping, like this area, we're right next to the 101, right? That's a big, that's a, a, a big thing. We have a canal here and we want to make sure we're staying in inside of a like area. So what we're doing when we comp, we have their house and we're trying to find a similar house in square footage, similar house in near built, similar house, bedroom, bathroom, square foot, all that. And then we want to see what it sold for, like compare apples to apples. And you, now you have to make sure you're in the, in the same areas because there's parts of Phoenix and parts of everywhere throughout the country where you can literally go across the street and they're different. Even though it's, it's close, it's a different area. It's a different, uh, it could be a different tax structure. It could be a different school system. It could just be a different community. So you really got to know your areas when you're comping these things. Uh, so I know you, you both did a great job. You want to talk about the comps? Sure. So what we, uh, you know, looked for properties, like you said, that were right within the same neighborhood. The square foot was, square footage was almost identical. Um, we wanted the same bed bath um, combination um, and ideally within less than half of a mile. Um, luckily within this neighborhood, there's this, this same floor plan exists in multiple places. So it was easy to, uh, oh, there are some of the old fluorescent lights in those, that picture. Oh yeah. Um, they put in a new cabinets. House. But yeah. They... <laughs> um, but so this, this floor plan is scattered throughout this neighborhood. So it was easy for us to find homes that were almost exactly the same um, and look at their remodels um, in kind of a comparable fashion. So, and, love... and we also wanted things that had been sold. Um, you know, I think we went back six months. Ideally, we wouldn't have to go that far, but to get, you know, a handful I think we went back to like maybe last July was the, mm -hmm. um, the earliest. And we were actually pulling this when we were um, looking to purchase. So this would have been like around February. So I think these things go through, the comps go through maybe the end of the year. And we added our featured property in. This is what I sent to the appraiser when, uh, as let's, information. Let's talk about that, right? Because I've heard, I heard stories. They're like, oh my gosh, you got to see Jill and Rich's deck. They're <laughs> Talk about well, so what we did to get this like, above, above uh, this high appraisal. You know, I, I don't know. This is our first time, so we don't know if we're lucky or if we're uh, skillful. But, um, you know, in talking to people and listening to podcasts and webinars, you know, we keep hearing stories about uh, you, you know, kind of get one shot with the appraiser. And if he comes in with a number that you don't like, then, you know, you're stuck with it or you have to start the process over, which costs time and money. And so um, I was like, all right, I'm going to, just package up everything we know about this house. And um, I didn't want to offend the appraiser, but I'm like, I, you know, I, so we kind of played it like, here's all the things that we pulled together when we were evaluating the house and here's everything we did. So we had a deck with all of our expenses. I had a deck with all of the receipts, um, you know, the list of everything we did to the house, this comp deck. I also had a packet of whole pictures. before pictures, all of the after pictures. Um, and so I, I sent that all over to the appraiser and he called and he said, uh, I have never received this much information on a house in my entire career. <laughs> oh, is that good or bad? I don't know. <laughs> but he was mentioning things so I could tell he actually read everything that I sent him. Um, I love it. You know, and he, <laughs> we met him out there and he's like, yeah, he's like, you don't have to tell me anything. I, you already wrote everything down. We're good. <laughs> so. I love it. Yeah, and that's, that's crucial. Like you want somebody out there uh, you know, so you, and, and it's a fine line, right? Because some of the appraisers will get offended. So you, 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 you want to feel it out, right? You want to feel it out. And I think you guys did a, a fantastic job. Uh, we, have, we have some questions. A lot of people are asking about the seasoning around uh, a lot of, from, from uh, some people's experience, there's a seasoning on the property to refinance it, or, or uh, I think that's what they're talking about. Um, Rental fee. Yeah, did you have any challenges around seasoning? I know when I have when I buy rental properties, I have a lender. I've used a commercial lender that they don't care about the tenants. They don't like right, they're looking at the asset. And but a lot of these other uh, places, they look at the seasoning of the house and or seasoning of the tenant. And what I mean by that for the for the guests is seasoning means how long have I owned it or how long has the tenant been in there? Did you have any challenges around that? We didn't, and you know, I think we'll definitely explore other options next time on commercial, the commercial side. This time, this is a personal mortgage for us. We're fortunate enough that our 
our, our daytime job is like, suck up a lot of time, but they pay us a good income. So we were able to afford this house, even if we don't have a renter in it. So, you know, based on that, our personal status, um, the lender said, we literally don't care what you do rent wise. You have enough money so we can close on this as soon as you, as soon as you have it remodeled and we can send an appraiser out, we're ready to move forward with the loan. I love it. Yeah. So for, for the, for the guests, it, it depends on your personal profile, how you bought it, how, what the exit strategy is. Um, and so I'm going to go over some of that here in a, in a moment, different ways to do it. Now they leverage their income. They leverage their personal credit, but there's a lot of ways you can, you can do these same type of deals with no income, no credit, uh, seller financing. We're going to get into some of that. Um, I think, do you have it, Jill, man, you, you two are fantastic. Um, you have any, anything you want to share? And then we're going to open it up for questions. I think that, yeah, I can't think of anything else that we haven't blabbled on about yet. <laughs> yeah. You know, I think, uh, you know, the big, the big takeaways, uh, that, that we got out of this, uh, was, um, you know, rely on your network. Um, you know, like, uh, be, you know, uh, be humble, There's, ask questions. Yeah, be humble, ask questions. Actually, that's that's probably the top thing we pulled out of this is that you can't go in thinking you know everything because uh, you don't. We don't anyway. Uh, and so, uh, you know, every approach is go in humble, ask a lot of questions um, from a contracting perspective, uh, make, you know, have contracts um, and, and put those in place. Make sure that you do all of the things that you need to from a tax perspective, get the W-9s. Um, so forth. Uh, so it's been, a, it's been a great opportunity and, uh, frankly, uh, couldn't have done it without Paul and the group. I love it. I love it. So we're gonna, we're gonna, and, and you guys make, and I love that you said W nines. People are like, what's a W nine? <laughs> like those are important and lean releases, like lean releases and W nines and all those little details. Um, that's, that's, um, really what, you know, the details like that. We're going to, if you have questions, put them in the comments. I'm going to show you guys what we're going to go over because I know there's a lot of questions around financing, right? A lot of questions around financing. Here's a little thing I put together last night, right? And we're going to, this is what I'm going to do the training on. There are so many different ways to buy properties to actually the acquisition strategy. There's different disposition, meaning selling strategies, and then there's different ways to fund them all, right? So this is like a little matrix I created. And this is what makes, I think, our group so special is we look at, we don't find deals. This is what I created this last night. It just popped in my head. I said, we don't find deals. We make deals. Give us a property and give us a situation. And then let's use our experience, our resources, our community, our masterminds, and let's figure it out. Let's figure it out. So I'm going to do a training on that. So I want, I'm going to talk a lot about funding. I want to talk about this deal specifically. Does anyone have questions on that, on the deal? Uh, a, a question was, do you have to have tenants before the appraisal or does it matter? Uh, it didn't with you, right? Because your, your income, your personal income was so great. And again, that, I think that, am I right on that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. We did not have renters. And I want to guess that's something we didn't touch on is renting in the pandemic, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, talk about that. Talk about that. <laughs> yeah. So we, we literally <laughs> listed it mid April, um, during the stay at home order. So we were really not sure how it was going to go, but that's when the house was ready. So there we, we just went. Um, so we ended up, you know, we sent, I, I created a video, put it on YouTube of a walkthrough of the house virtual tour. And, um, we ended up receiving still two or three inquiries on the house a day. So I don't know if that's good or bad cause it's the only, you know, compared to normal times, but still we were getting, you know, good amount of inquiries on it. Um, I was emailing out the list of our rental criteria, which we mm -hmm. had um, set uh, before we got into this project yeah. and um, the virtual tour. And so from that, then a lot of people would respond back and say, yeah, don't qualify or would never hear from them again. Um, but the people who did respond were truly interested in the house. Um, we received, I think, five applications. And um, out of those, one, uh, one family um, qualified and um, we did very thorough due diligence of calling all of their prior employers, yes. their landlords, um, the credit check, background check, and um, they got glowing reviews from everyone. So we um, feel good at this yeah. point that we have um, some great tenants um, in our new home. 
and any of the little hiccups that came along the way during that due diligence uh, background, uh, you know, Jill would give the prospective tenant a job to go off and do, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, like it might be, um, you know, I can't get a hold of your boss at this number because the number's disconnected. And, oh, okay, well, it was the wrong, I gave you the wrong number and, and they would be back, you know. So um, don't, don't forego due diligence because uh, of a hiccup like that. Just give, them a, give, the, give the prospective tenant a job to come back with a, a way for you to complete that activity. I love it. I love it. A question was, a couple questions. How do you move, move the property from, uh, from uh, the mortgage, I guess you could say, into the LLC? It's just paperwork for my, right? I mean, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we'll do a title change after, uh, after the mortgage is in place. Yeah. So it's just paperwork on the back end. Uh, people are saying, thank you. Thank you. They just love it. Um, yeah. Uh, two or three loan and not being, okay. We talking more about financing. So in the beginning of this, the, uh, I have a, a follow-up question to that. Yeah. Ebony or Onyx, <laughs> your, your screen. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you guys mentioned that you already had a rental before. Um, that was a primary residence that you converted to a rental. Are you also converting that one into your LLC? No, uh, that, that's a personal res residence that I had long before. Uh, so that'll remain in my name. Uh, we'll build our portfolio together uh, under the LLC. Great, great. Uh, W9s, we have some comments about W9 wholesale. Can you find me doing the show? Uh, someone asked about, can you go into detail on how the wholesaler find, found the deal? Uh, they already did that earlier and I, you know, I just, I want to be respectful of time. We're, we're pushing 1030. I want to wrap this up by 1030. So, um, Josiah, I can, uh, we can send you a recording on that. Uh, what were your qualifications? You said qualified. What were your qualifications for rent? Um, so we were looking for someone who had a credit score of 620 or higher. Um, they had to have no bankruptcies, no, um, uh, uh, evictions, um, no smoking, um, positive reviews from all prior landlords, um, positive reviews from their employer. Uh, they needed to provide accurate information on their application. Um, and we said no pets preferred, but we, you know, we're, we were open to pets, but we were hoping we would dissuade pets. Um, and the family who's moving in doesn't have a pet. So <laughs> cool. Now I, I want to talk a little bit about that is you, you have with all the rules and the regulations out there, you have to make sure you're not discriminating. And th yeah, this yeah. is just in the general general, right? You're not redlining. You're not, you know, yeah, yeah. right. There's pets. Like if you have service pets, you have to allow them. Right. So there's a lot of rules and regulations around so, that rental side. Sorry about that. <laughs> What's yeah. that we have a funny story about the uh, emotional support pet. Yeah, let's hear uh, it. Yeah, so uh, one of the prospective tenants, uh, a couple of a uh, couple of guy, younger guys, um, they were talking to us about the the uh, um, you know we we're talking to them about uh, our criteria, and uh, one of the guys says, "Well, um, you know, uh, my my buddy, he may have a, uh, a he may have pet, a pet, or it might be an emotional support pet," and uh, we're like, "What?" It might be. What do you mean, might be? <laughs> and so uh, Jill sent a note, said, well, uh, you know, if, if it is, then uh, we'll just need to see documentation of it. And uh, lo and behold, uh, he was able to connect with a social worker out of Utah on a Sunday and have a certi certificate emailed to him that it's an emotional support pet. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, there's no way around that. There's nothing you can do. We looked at it, uh, nothing. Uh, but in terms of the overall criteria, what we do is use a point system. So uh, a lot of these, you know, some of these are hard uh, and fast rules or, uh, you know, otherwise, uh, and some are a little bit more squishy. So we will assign points based on the, uh, the actual results. And then ultimately, if they, uh, the, first, the first person that applies that has over a seven in our point scale, then we offer them the place. So, and I love that. And that's really what I know process. Chris Wilson really teaches that is like, you know, if, if you treat everyone the same, right. Using like a point system, it's, you know, and, and you have to, you have to understand again, the rules and the regulations and how to use that, but you got to treat everyone the same. And as long as you're doing that for the most part, right. For the most part, you, you can uh, say a leery. Another big concern 
uh, not just with uh, emo understanding how to handle the emotional support animals is, you know, as we, as we evolve in the community is, uh, I know a lot of people talk about the medical marijuana, like what can you, you can't, right? There's, that's a whole aspect of it. So you can't have smoking, but you know, that's, that's a, a real conversation. So you really got to know how to handle those things. So you're not discriminating. I don't want to get into that because that's a, again, we want to be responsible. I just want people to know, uh, there was a question and it is, so we, we got, uh, someone had a question about, I've read that switching the title to an LLC looks suspicious to the IRS. Uh, they're tamping down on that. Here's the thing. Uh, that's Ben and Irene. Here's the thing on that. If done correct, there's a correct way to do almost everything, right? And, and you have to know that the correct way and, and make sure you're using the uh, professionals that know how to do that. So that would be my comment on that. Uh, people are just proud of you. Is, is it considered discriminatory practice if I choose to provide a 10% discount to veterans? I'm not going to give legal advice. So I would say consult, consult an attorney on that. Um, once you do, 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 once you provide this closure, how much do you say? Okay. We got a couple, well, we were in round. Oh, we got a couple other great, great uh, comments. I want to get wrapped in up. Uh, do you have anything else, Jill and Rich, before we, I want to talk about our masterminds. I want to bring Jay Tenenbaum out and a couple other people to talk about masterminds. But before we do that, do you have anything to share? No, no, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, it's, been, it's been great. Um, like I said, couldn't have done it without the community. I love it. I love it. Well, I, we're proud of you. And, you know, thank you for uh, coming out today. And keep it up, right? Keep it up. We just love, love having successes. And we're, you'll definitely be back again. I want to share with everybody a little bit more about our group. So we, uh, we, we do a lot more than just what you saw today. We, we're doing almost every type of deal you can think of out there. And we highlight those on, on different deals on different Saturdays. And we have masterminds. So we have masterminds every Wednesday where we actually get together and, and have a conversation like this, put deals together. And, and then we have calls Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every morning, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. And we're doing the same thing. So I want to bring Jay Tenenbaum out. He actually facilitates or runs the masterminds. So I met Jay two and a half years ago, and he called, he's, a, he's a national speaker on real estate, distressed notes, REOs, things like that. And he called me, uh, well, he connect, I got connected to him. He goes, how can I help the community? How can I help you? And that's not something I get, I hear a lot, right? That's not something I hear a lot. So uh, I instantly knew I wanted to connect with this guy and he's become a dear friend of mine. And uh, he, he's taken a, a lot on and, and really elevating the game of the mastermind. So Jay, you wanna share, share about you and what the masterminds are up to? Sure, good morning, everybody. Uh, Jill and Rich, great job. Um, fantastic. Just, I, you know, I know, I know how you guys, you know, analyze stuff and it was a fantastic job. Um, really proud of you guys. Thanks, Jay. Um, so, um, I was privileged, I've been privileged enough to manage the masterminds of, of the group. Um, Jill and Rich came, uh, from Paul's, uh, multi, uh, fix and flip mastermind. We have multifamily. Um, I run our own mastermind where we're buying things, I have notes, REOs out of state. Um, we've got short-term rentals. Um, we've got a variety of other masterminds we're bringing on, on board. Um, it, it's not, there's not a whole lot of managing I got to do because I've got really talented people, including Paul and, and the other people that run their masterminds of what they do. We're all passionate about what we do and helping others. Um, I do, I certainly understand how Jill and Rich said many times how if it wasn't for Paul, it wasn't for the community. Um, that's what we, as mastermind facilitators, that's what we try to instill within our groups. That's kind of just the unwritten law of the jungle kind of thing. Um, we're really, really proud of what we do in that regard. Um, so that's what the masterminds do. Um, next week, uh, we're going to Cincinnati, Ohio, um, cause we, I get the honor to do, uh, the virtual property, the, the virtual property tour was next Saturday when things were live. We're still, we're still, we're going virtual, but now everything's virtual. So we're still going virtual, virtual next Saturday. Um, and, uh, and also I want, we're going to showcase, uh, three of the, of the members of our mastermind who just closed on three deals last this, this last past week. Um, so we're still, as Zach said, we're doing deals. We're finding deals. Deals are falling in our laps. Um, and just, that's the way the, the world goes around. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want me to, to say, Zach, because basically, you know, like I said, that's, that's mastermind grows our community and Jill and Rich have been many times. The community is what's just helped them. It was helped others. It's what we like to do. I love it. Yeah. Let's um, Paul, Paul, do you want to share anything about your mastermind? You were on the fixed flip wholesale. 
Um, I would just like to say that uh, congratulations, awesome job, Jill and Rich. I mean, it, you guys are legitimately the superstar testament to uh, the process of the mastermind. I mean, you guys took everything that was given to you. You did it. You didn't question it. You, you, you followed the process and it led you into directly into, uh, you know, doing and doing this awesome deal. So, um, I mean, the, the process is there uh, in, in all the masterminds. The process is there. Get in there, do the work. And uh, this is the kind of results you can have. I love it. I love it. Uh, do we have, um, if we have any of the other mastermind leaders come on out, I'd love for you to share, but um, I want to get into a training because a lot of questions, there's a lot of questions about different structures and different financing. And we're actually, we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to go on on a leap. I saw Mr. Julian on here. We're actually going to start a money mastermind, right? A money mastermind before our regular mastermind. Uh, we're still working out the details on that. And um, you know, so, so Julian's going to be leading that. And the idea behind that is, is there's so many ways to finance deals. There's so many ways to do all this stuff that we want, we want to have uh, an understanding of that as a mastermind so that when we're doing the different deals, we, we understand different ways to finance them because I will, I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It matters how much, how educated you are, how resourceful you are and how good you can put deals together. So in, in, in order to try to illustrate that, I've created this, this little matrix, right? So first off, we have to understand that we have different strategies. So I write down strategies as, and this is not a complete list. I just, I couldn't fit any more on the screen. <laughs> so this is different strategies that we have. Hold on, we got some comments here. What do we got? What do we got? Uh, all right, I can't see the comments. All right, everyone, everyone's sharing their love for, uh, for Jill and Rich. All right, so buy and hold. I consider that cash flow. How do you get residual cash flow? Here's some different strategies that you can actually do to get cash flow. And then we have fix and flip. Buy it ugly, make it pretty. Now you can, now you can flip uh, commercial, you can fix and flip residential, multifamily, you can fix and flip land, uh, with more of an improvement. And then you have wholesale, right? Finding the buyer, finding the seller, putting them together and getting a fee for it. Now there, you wanna make sure you're doing that legally and ethically as well. And then we have different acquisition strategies. How are you finding it? So is it subject to, that's a seller financing uh, strategy. So you could buy a subject to uh, for buy and hold, you could buy a subject to for fix and flip, you could even wholesale subject twos, right? So this is a whole list of different ways to actually buy. You can buy a foreclosure for a cash flow property. You can buy a foreclosure for a fix and flip. You can buy a foreclosure for a wholesale and so on and so on. Uh, city violations, maybe that's your lead source, right? You can find a city violation for any of these. And then we have uh, disposition, which means exit strategy. What is the exit strategy? How are you selling it? Uh, are we gonna do, are we gonna do it seller financing? Are we gonna be the bank? Are we going to lease option it for an exit strategy? Are we going to do a sandwich lease, which means I lease option it on the front end as an acquisition strategy, and then I lease option it on the back end as a disposition strategy, and I get the markup, right? There's so many different uh, uh, strategies for the exit strategies as well. And then you bring in different types of financing. Now, different types, you have short term, you have long term, you have high interest, you have low interest, you have uh, types of financing that is credit dependent, that is income dependent, that is asset dependent. Right, so I tried to put an extensive list out here, and the purpose of this, the purpose of all of this, is is try to, to try to articulate that there's a lot to this, and it, once you know, you can get really creative. You can get really creative and really start putting deals together. I know me personally, I love seller finance. I love subject to. I love pre foreclosure because I can get terms. We're buying houses on 30-year mortgages. My lowest interest rate I've ever had is two and a half percent on a 30 year note with no income check on myself, no credit checks on myself. And um, I can do as many of them as I want. Right. So there's a lot of creative stuff that we can do out there in the world. And this is what we talk about every day. This is what we're talking about on our morning calls. This is what we're talking about on our masterminds. And it, it's a lot of fun to put these deals together. 
So I want to if I want to invite you all back right to our masterminds. If you actually want to learn more about who we are and what we do and how you can actually you know start hanging out with us, we have an introduction to our group on Wednesday night from seven to nine p.m. Arizona time, and you're going to actually get to see there's uh, about 150 200 people on that call, and you're going to get to see what the masterminds look like inside of that realm. And then the masterminds people break out and you're going to uh, stay in there with me. And then we're going to be going over uh, who we are, what we do, uh, more specifics about our group. And then we have about an hour long training on taxes, on velocity banking, on infinite banking, on real creative real estate and a bunch of other really cool things. So this is the link for that AllianceZoomMeeting.com. Come check us out. Come hang out with us on Wednesday. Other than that, we're going to wrap this up because uh, we, had, we had 105 people on today. That was fantastic. So I want to I wanna acknowledge everyone on this call in the sense that, you know, there's a lot going on in the world right now. And I can't think of a better place to be than around a bunch of people that are, are heading in the same direction, right? So I just want to acknowledge you for being on here on a Saturday morning, spending your time with us. There's a lot of people that say they want to invest in real estate and very few of them do anything about it. So by you all being on this call today, really says a lot about your dedication to yourself and your dedication to this. I want you to know we really take that serious. Let us know how we can support you. We'd love to see you on Wednesday. Uh, great job, Jill and Rich. Fantastic. Can't wait to see you on number two. Uh, thank you for the team members for being on here. Guests, have a beautiful day, and we will see you soon. Bye, gang.